The next time the gospel would come knocking on China's door would five centuries later in the Yuan dynasty. This time it had to do with the famous Marco Polo. In the year 1260, Kublai Khan, ruler of the Mongol Empire, met with Marco Polo's father and uncle. Khan expressed an interest in Catholicism and asked them to bring a letter to the Pope, requesting oil from the lamp of the Holy Sepulchre. Ten years later, Marco Polo accompanied his father and uncle on their return voyage. They presented Khan with Pope's response and sacred oil. Khan became impressed with Marco. Marco stayed. Marco Polo lived in China for 17 years. In the widely popular The Travels of Marco Polo, the Venetian described the prosperity and grandeur of China, as well as Kublai Khan's faith. He wrote that Kublai Khan regarded Christianity as the truest and best religion because it commands nothing that is not full of goodness and holiness. Christianity in the Yuan dynasty was essentially comprised of the Nestorian Christians that survived from the Tang dynasty in Mongol tribes. In Mongolian, they were called Erkuner Arkaim, or Believers of God. Kublai Khan's mother, Sorgatani Beki, was one such believer. Some say there were roughly 30,000 Christians in the capital, making up the bulk of its garrison. In 1294, China welcomed its first Roman Catholic missionary, John of Monte Corvino. This Italian priest opened China to Catholicism. In a letter to the Pope, he wrote that he had built a church within a stone's throw from the palace, so close that the Khan could hear songs of worship. Unfortunately, Christianity in the Yuan dynasty remained limited to royalty and other Mongols, and consequently did not spread widely. In 1362, Zhu Yuan Zheng led his Ming armies into Chu Enzhou, killing the bishop. Several years later, the Christianity of the Yuan dynasty was all but extinct. <laughs> 